the Sustainably Yours Homestead, where today we're going to be checking in on our little oyster mushroom experiment. <laughs> it's working! It's working! So this is day 10 of our little experiment, and as you can see, we have fungal growth, which is not something that I really expected, but I've been doing some research to figure out what comes next, and it turns out there are about as many ways to grow mushrooms as there are to skin a cat. That is to say, more than one. And from what I've found, I think I'm going to want a little bit more, this would be called spawn, this would be cardboard spawn. I'm going to want a little more cardboard spawn than what I've made here in order to grow mushrooms. Let's back up for a second. When you see a mushroom, that mushroom is not the actual fungus. It's a part of the fungus, a part that we call the fruiting body. But it's the reproductive organ, so to speak, of, uh, of a fungus. The actual fungus, the bulk of it, is underground or digging through whatever substrate you found it on. For these oyster mushrooms, um, if you pull the mushroom itself away from the tree or the log that you find it on, you'll find something kind of like this, or it might look more like plant roots. Um, that's the actual fungus, and these things can be massive. There are places in the world where there are mushrooms that cover three square miles of land. Now it's not the actual mushroom, the fruiting body, but it's more like this kind of part. So it might sound crazy, but some fungi are actually considered among the largest living organisms on the planet. But anyway, let's talk about how we are going to transfer this stuff to some more cardboard so we can later on use it to grow our mushrooms. And for this I have some distilled water. I have a plastic container. Um, you may use a larger or smaller container depending on how much cardboard spawn you want to make. I have some cardboard that I've cut into small pieces. I've got some isopropyl alcohol and hydrogen peroxide. I have a large container. Oops. This one I'm going to use to soak the, uh, the cardboard in hydrogen peroxide to hopefully kill any kind of bacteria or other fungi that I don't want growing. And then we're going to soak them for a little while in boiling water. And finally I have my original mushroom spawn. Now I see some discoloration, some brown discoloration. I don't think that is a, a contaminant, I hope. We're going to roll with it and see what happens. We're going to start by soaking our cardboard in hydrogen peroxide. So I'm just going to pour pretty much the whole bottle in here. And we'll just put all of our cardboard in like this. Now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start boiling my water. I'm going to boil these in distilled water. It's probably overkill, but it'll kind of make sure that there's no chlorine. While I'm waiting for the water to boil, I'm going to go ahead and disinfect my plastic container. For that, we're going to use some isopropyl alcohol. I also want to make sure I get the lid. Make sure to dry it out really well. Then I'm going to recover it 
So nothing gets in while we're waiting. We got our water up to boiling. Now we're going to transfer the cardboard from the hydrogen peroxide into the boiling water. Now from what I've read, from what I've read, you would let this sit for an hour or so. Now it's, it's already been soaking in the hydrogen peroxide and I think one of the reasons for leaving it for an hour, number one, so that the cardboard is nice and soaked, number two, uh, so that the hot water has time to work and kill bacteria and stuff. Um, I guess better safe than sorry, so we're going to let this sit for a little while and then we'll finish things up. And I'm going to go ahead and start layering this cardboard in. It's still a little hot, so I'm going to dip it out with a spoon and we'll let it cool before we add any of our mushroom spawn to it. So I'm going to So I want to take my cardboard and I want to wring it out. It doesn't need to be completely dry. That is still quite warm. But to the point where if I squeeze it, it doesn't really drip. So maybe something like that. And I'm going to layer it down on the bottom. And that turns out to not be nearly as much as I had anticipated, so let's keep on going. I think that's going to be my first layer. So let's open these up and see exactly what we have. I've washed my hands thoroughly. Disinfected with alcohol, make sure that gets dry. And let's see exactly what we have in here. Some of it is sticking to the bag. Definitely has a, like that sweet mushroomy smell to it. Doesn't smell sour at all. That's good. I'm going to raise this up and, oh yeah, nice. There's what we want to see right there. Nice white fuzzy mycelia. Let's get rid of these chunks of mushroom. These were the wild mushrooms that I pulled off of the tree. Start tearing this into some smaller pieces. Let's place our spawn in. I'm going to use one whole bag on this layer because I'm not going to have a whole lot of cardboard left. But that should just make it grow a little faster. All right. And now we're going to cover that layer with another layer of cardboard. So hopefully our mycelia will continue to grow through this new uh, cardboard and eventually we'll have enough cardboard, uh, enough cardboard spawn to maybe grow some actual mushrooms and eat them. Um, I'll make sure to, to keep you updated. Hope to see you back again next time for more daily sustainable living.